Well, 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 well. Good late afternoon. First day of November 20 of 22. And you already know. You already know what I'm doing. I'm walking. I just have, uh, I don't have much to say, but I will say this. Uh, November for me is a t is is a tough time because it's when my mom passed about four years ago, right after Thanksgiving, and uh, the day before she passed, a couple of years prior to that, my grandmother passed. So uh, November's kind of tough, kind of a tough time for me. Anyway, so keep me and uh, my family in your prayers. It's going to be tough. We're going to do the best we can. And <clears throat> we're going to make the most of it because we're at a stage in our grief where we can remember our mom and grandma and laugh and remember all the ways they were good to us, all the things they did for us, all the funny quirks uh, that uh, they showed us, you know, when they just... We're just being real because those was just two real soldiers right there and they were they went through they had their scars they showed their scars and they were just they were tough and uh the hole in our hearts is just it's deep but it's full we're at this we're at the stage of our grief where we're beyond we still cry and stuff like that but but we're at our we're at a stage in our grief where we know we've healed because we're able to go back and remember their voices and hear some of the goofy things that they used to say and laugh. So there's joy even in even in grief. And <clears throat> and I know a lot of people are going through this time. You know, the Thanksgiving and Christmas season is tough for a lot of people. There are a lot of missing seats at the table and it's like in these days that are upon us, it's like becoming more and more commonplace. There's more and more seats missing at the table. Uh, more and more people are leaving us. Um, and it's just kind of kind of bittersweet but we have hope we have hope even in the midst of somber times because we have the Lord the Lord is our joy his joy is our strength we're able to make the most out of each day knowing that the cloud of witnesses for us has gotten bigger uh we have uh immeasurable strength in that and we're able to move through all of the different stages of grief and have joy even in the midst of all of that grief um but i just wanted to i wanted to say these two things First off, I did a previous video about Halloween, and it was a little bit before Halloween, and how uh, the spiritual atmosphere right after Halloween changes, and everything from my neighborhood goes solemn and somber at a time when it should be most joyful. We should be giving thanks to the Lord, you know, as best we can, even in grief, you know. There's still a space for giving thanks and preparing for the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the hallmark as far as holidays are concerned to me. The most important one outside of the resurrection uh, and the commemoration of the resurrection. Um, but the atmosphere has, uh, changed. 
I've been noticing it from year to year and this was before lest anybody say well maybe the atmosphere's changed for you because you know your mama passed and your grandma passed in November maybe that's why you feel this way no no those who are spiritual understand exactly what it is I'm saying and they can read the temperature just like I'm reading the temperature and understand the shift in activity the shift in spiritual uh the whole spiritual attitude of the way things are versus the way things were and how that high holy day yesterday how that high holy day affects things spiritually if you're able to see uh if you're able to see spiritual things and discern things i'm not talking about uh feelings i'm talking about discernment when you can walk in a room and know there's an evil presence in the room and know it beyond a shadow of a doubt and begin to pray all of this silently and begin to pray and call on the lord without a word and you feel the evil presence leave the room that's that's the kind of discernment I'm talking about. That's the kind of discernment that we're going to have to have in this day and age going forward. We're going to have to be that sharp and aware. Because what we see happening around us and what's been happening for quite some time is spiritual. It's more of a spiritual fight, but that spiritual, like I said in the video the spiritual aspect is affecting the physical and those who have just been you know like surfing along on the surface you know i'm this baby christian and i like the milk the milk is good and i don't want any meat i don't want i don't even want to have uh to get on some sort of cereal or anything like that. I just want to continue on with the milk. Times are tough and they're going to get tougher. Uh, you're going to have to develop a palate for more than milk. Milk will not make it in these final days days now no man knows the day or the hour that the lord is to come back no man knows that however make no mistake it's imminent it's imminent i believe it's imminent am i a prophet no. but if you check the spiritual temperature if you check the spiritual temperature, conditions are favorable for the Lord Jesus to crack the sky. And I want everybody I know to be ready. Everybody. It's time to stop playing around with building your kingdoms. It's time to lay your kingdoms down and pick up the cause of Christ and it's time for you to uplift his kingdom because only in his kingdom will you be able to withstand what's next and there is a next there's a next I have not seen nor ear heard neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him but just like we serve a showing and approving God, we're gonna have to be a showing and approving people. We're gonna have to show him and prove to him our love for him by what we are willing to sacrifice in his honor, what we're willing to lay down for him. Now's the time for you to abdicate the throne of your own kingdom. 
put your crowns at the feet of the King of Kings and get to know him in a way you never have before. Because the things that your eyes are about to see are going to require you in order for you to survive, to know him in a way you've never known him before ever in your life. We're talking about life and death at this point. Life and death. Oh, I got time, I got time. And that mindset wastes your time. That mindset is a selfish one. And it leaves you standing before the Lord with all of his gifts wasted. And you know what he did to the one who stood before him, even in a parable, wasting gifts. They got thrown in the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Called him a lazy, unprofitable servant. That's not what you want said of you in the end. That's not what you want said of you in the end. As you go through, as you go through this day, consider the atmosphere. Consider the spiritual atmosphere. Where we are, where the Bible is saying that we are. No man knows the day or know the hour, but spiritually, You got to know where we are. And you have to prepare yourself for where we are and where we're going. And the way, the best preparations you can make, the best you can do, is to not be fearful or anxious, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request known to God and the peace of God. The peace of God that I wish to you. The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. But if you are not praying, if you are not at this point where you are like, Lord, please help. If you are not there, you will not have the peace. And so many of us are not there. We don't have the peace of God. Not the peace of the world. The peace of God. Jesus said, peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace do I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. If you don't know that peace, you can know it today. You can know it today. Today. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you today. I am a sinner. And I need a savior. I need to know that when I close my eyes and I draw my last breath, I will open my eyes and I will be before you in paradise. My name will be in your book of life. And I will spend eternity with you and all those who loved you. You got to know that beyond a shadow of a doubt now. It's not a fearful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But you've got to be certain. And you've got to tell your, tailor your life in that. You've got to tailor your life to living as though each day was your last. I can tell by the way some of us are living. We don't believe that. But now more than ever, you've got to believe it. 
you got to get that clear in your head. You got to discern the times, discern the atmosphere. Enjoy your life, love your life. It's but a vapor, it's wonderful. But when it's time to lay down your life, lay it down empty of all that God had you to do. Lay your slate down full of souls you shared the Lord with who will be with you in heaven. Because let me, let me, let me be blunt. The enemy of our souls got a slate. He knows the Bible better than a lot of us do. He knows just how much time he has left. He knows his time is short. And he is going to, it's a suicide mission, surely. But he knows, he knows that he is going to fill his slate up with everybody he wants to take with him. But he particularly wants to take those who claim Christ with them. That pleases him with him. That pleases him most. He has a slate and he is busy. He is at work because he knows his time is short. We're the only ones that don't know our time is short. We live like God gave us our next breath guaranteed like tomorrow is promised to us when our next breath is not check the spiritual temperature check your heart in all of this make sure it's clean before the Lord as much as possible we live in a fallen wicked world there's beauty and joy in this world there's love in this world all of the fruits of, of the spirit are still in this world there's still even in grief there is love there's joy there's peace there's patience there's kindness there's gentleness there's goodness there's temperance there's meekness there's self-control all of that is still in this world as long as the holy spirit residing in us is in this world. So this world is wonderful, but this world and all of its desires, good and bad, are passing away. They're passing away. Yes, cultivate the fruits of the Spirit. Share the Lord with everybody you can share them with, but prepare your hearts for the King of Glory. Prepare your hearts for what is to come, for what is to come. The joy and the sorrow. Be, be instant, be ready, in season, out of season. Be prepared, be prepared, discern. Check the spiritual temperature and be prepared at all times. Because you don't know the day or the hour that's your last day and last hour. You don't know. You don't know. Only the Lord knows. You don't know how you're going to leave the earth and in what fashion. But God knows. Your days are already numbered in his book. Even the very hairs on your head, the Bible says, are numbered. He knows the way that you're going to take. He knows the way you're going to take. But you have to be, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. I heard a pastor today say, and I'll just speak on, uh, I'll just speak on takeoff from this standpoint. I pray for his family. I, I pray for his family. I pray for his mom. I pray for Quavo. I pray for offset. I pray for their family. It's just absolutely horrible. Horrible what happened. And I send my deepest condolences to them. Just horrible. 
But a pastor today, I heard him this morning, say uh, that this happened. In a sense, he said that this senseless death happened outside of God's will. That wasn't God's will. And I just, I just want to pose a question to that. What can happen? What can occur outside of God's will? Are we, are we so obtuse? I mean, I know that that's, that's something that somebody in deep grief would say, this is not right. And, God's not fair. This wasn't his will. And God is sovereign. God is sovereign. And we all have to come to the realization that whether we like it or not, whether it was fair or not, whether we agree with it or not, whether we think it, it wasn't right or not, nothing. Absolutely nothing happens outside of God's will. God saw this beautiful young man when he formed him from the dust of the earth. And God saw this morning all of that and everything in between. God saw and knew not one portion of Takeoff's life did he live outside of God's will for anybody else who's left. Nothing happens outside of God's will. There is no such thing. There is no such thing. Nobody agrees with what happened. But, but that's God's will. God's will be done. We don't have to agree with his will. It's sovereign. He knows all things. He knows the way all of us will take. We can question God all day long, but his will is going to be done. And we're going to take our time. We can either take our time and do one of two things. We can shake our fist in God's face and say how unfair his will is. Or we can say just like Job. This came to me, ooh, maybe four or five days before my mama passed. I was walking and I knew the time with my mom is short, was short. I knew it because spiritually I knew. I knew where she was going and I knew she was ready. And I knew my time with her was short. Even in my selfishness, wanting to keep her here, I knew what the will of God was. And I knew her time with me and with my brothers was short. I was out walking just like this. I was at work and the, and the Lord came to me and he said, in so many words, he said, are you ready? Are you ready? You really let your mom come to me. Are you ready? And I said, my mom has done everything that she needed to do here. She's done everything. She, she's done the most important things. She's leaving us with you. She's leaving us literally in your hands. Now we have all of the tools, the reading, the writing, the the raising of the families, the taking care of finances and business and all of the brass tax and stuff. She gave us everything in between and she devoted her lives to that mission. And she has three children and 12 grandchildren that all have a relationship with the Lord. She's done everything that she was here to do and, and then she lived her life too. She was a wife and a mother. She did everything. There was something she might have wanted to do. She wanted to travel more 
and 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 do more of that she was a world traveler she loved traveling she loved foreign foods and culture and she was very well rounded highly intelligent so she's done as far as i see everything that you sent her here to do god and she and her hands were open to the poor given the hospitality if you if you read proverbs 31 you'll see doris and you'll see her mother doris she came and she gave as 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 the young folks say now she came and she gave what she needed to give she really did so me trying to hold on to her uh it's selfish and it's what all of us do that's my mama you know if it's your mama will God bless you, honey. I'm going to pray for you, you know. I'm going to pray to strengthen God on your life and, you know, to comfort you in your grief. And and and, and, and we say all of this stuff. Oh, but when it's our mama. <laughs> when it's our mama. Oh, that's a whole different thing. Now you're talking about my mama. Not, not your mama, but mine. That's different. No. No, it's actually the same. It's the same, but I went all the way off, but... I was walking in. Lord said, are you ready to give up? And I said, no, but yeah. No, but yeah. No, I want my mama here. No, I want her to see Kedra graduate from high school. No, I want her to see Kedra get married and have, I want her to be around for her, her grandkids and great grandkids. And yeah, I want her to see me be around. You know, all of these things. So no, I ain't ready, but yeah, I am. Because I know she's done all that she needed to do. I have unfinished business. I have unfinished work to do. I have not done everything that the Lord needs for me to do. And I know it. I know it. But as far as my mama, she's done all she needed to do. She's done the most important things, the things that please God the most. So she left here with a full slate. There are people who followed her into heaven and there are people who went before her into glory that she spoke of about to about Jesus and showed them the hands and feet of Jesus in her acts of service to them, her kindness to them. She, she had a full slate when she stood before Jesus, but she had empty hands. Her feet had clocked the miles that they needed to clock. She did what it is she was here to do. And so I was able to stand at her funeral and sing at her funeral. And I was able to say like Job then at that time walking in now. Naked came I from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord giveth, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. She went physically, not in a way that I would want to go, and I don't want to go. But she went spiritually the exact way I want to go. With an empty, with empty hands and a full slate of souls that she led to Christ. Her own family first. She was hospitable, but she did not neglect her family. She was able to do all of that. That's how I want to stand before God. What have I given your hands to do? to honor me that you accomplished are you coming to me with unfinished business undone work and me in my grace have given you all this time and given you the wherewithal and the mindset to know exactly what it is to discern exactly what it is I have for you to do and it's undone it's not a conversation I want to have with the Lord. And it shouldn't be a conversation that you 
want to have with him either. That's a long, that's a long rant. I didn't expect it to be this long, but but I just have all of this on my mind at heart. We need to discern the signs of the times and know that the hour is short. Notice the know that the laborers are few, but the harvest is still right. And we're still responsible for harvesting. So let's be about the harvest. Let's pray, get our discernment together, seek God like never before, and be prepared for whenever it is our time to send, to hand our slate to the God, to the Lord. God bless y'all.